His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received at Sheikh Palace today. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, in addition to a number of senior participants of the 2016 government forum. His Majesty the King commended the role of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister in elevating the performance of the government to reach excellence and provide the people with the best services in line with Bahrain Economic Vision 2030, which aims to reinforce the status of the citizen as a foundation of development. His Majesty the King also thanked His Royal Highness the Crown Prince for his initiative to organize the important event and for his continuous contributions to developing the government's performance and setting plans that support the national economy in service of the country and the people. He praised the presentation that His Royal Highness the Crown Prince made outlining the priorities of the coming phase of government's action to achieve the desired goals for the people and lauded the efforts of the government's team in this regard, urging for more efforts that enhance productivity based on the principles of sustainability and fair competitiveness. His Majesty directed directed more care to the issue of the people and working on meeting their demands in addition to upgrading the level of government services in order to provide the best living standards for the Bahraini citizens. He noted the significant results of the forum which brought together government officials as one team with the aim of exchanging ideas and visions to reinforce cooperation and coordination in line with the Kingdom's economic vision and expressed optimism for a brighter future in light of the number of statistics previewed during the forum. He said that Bahrain, despite all challenges, has been able to head towards comprehensive of development in all fields and is considered a pioneer in this regard thanks to the loyalty of the people. His Majesty the King commended the outstanding accomplishments Bahrain is making in various sectors and affirmed the kingdom has come a long way thanks to the efforts of its people. He noted the upcoming phase requires more efforts and hard work to achieve the aspirations of the people and the developmental goals of the kingdom towards its advancement. For his part, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister confirmed the continuation of developing government performance and improving the level and quality of government action outcomes to provide the people with the best living standards in line with the directives of His Majesty the King. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister hailed the support of His Majesty to the forum, which contributed in supporting government action to reach more progress. He also noted the backing of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince to all initiatives that push forward performance improvements, especially in the services field. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received at Sheikh Palace today, Interior Ministry Under Secretary for Nationality, Passports and Residence Affairs, and Honorary President of the Fine Arts Society, Sheikh Rashid bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, who presented a painting to His Majesty the King. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, were also present. His Majesty expressed appreciation to Sheikh Rashid for the gift, hailing his efforts, expressing admiration for his work, and wishing him success. His Majesty praised all. Bahraini artists who have contributed positively in the culture and civilization of the kingdom and the area of arts and creativity. Sheikh Rashid expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King for his support to Bahraini artists, wishing him continued health and further prosperity to the kingdom. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, received today at Glebia Palace the sons of the late Sheikh Khalifa bin Hamad bin Isa bin Ali Al Khalifa, led by the Interior Ministry Under Secretary for Nationality, Passports and Residence, Sheikh Rashid bin Khalifa Al Khalifa. They expressed appreciation for His Royal Highness's sincere condolences regarding the passing of Sheikh Thajba bin Muhammad bin Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa. They affirmed that His Royal Highness's presence by their side has helped them through the unfortunate event and that it reflects his keenness on communicating with the people of the kingdom. A number of the royal family members attended the meeting. His Royal Highness affirmed that staying in contact with people is key for maintaining national unity and prompted establishing brotherly relations that will help stand in the way of plots and challenges aimed at dividing the people of Bahrain. For his part, Sheikh Rashid bin Khalifa Al Khalifa expressed thanks and appreciation for His Royal Highness's deep condolences, wishing him health and prosperity.
Ms. Rohan is the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, received today at Libya Palace the Honorary President of the Good Word Society, Sheikh Isa bin Ali bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, who presented to Ms. Rohan as the winners of the Sheikh Isa bin Ali Charity Works Award. Ms. Rohan has affirmed that the concepts of volunteering and dedicating time and efforts for the sake of others is present in the policies of the GCC countries, particularly in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, which seeks to maintain the safety and stability of the region's countries. He said that Arab nations is abundant with examples of charity, which the teachings of Islam encourage and inspire and called for adopting these concepts in order to bring forth further Arab unity and consolidation. He commended the role of the Isa bin Ali Award and the humanitarian initiatives of Sheikh Isa bin Ali Al Khalifa, who has become a role model for Bahraini youth. His Rohan is affirmed the government supports volunteer works through providing all the kingdom sectors, including the private sector, which with the necessary resources. The Prime Minister said the government strives to achieve social prosperity, security and development through adopting legislation and policies that encourage joint partnership between the private and public sectors. For his part, Sheikh Isa bin Ali Al Khalifa expressed thanks and appreciation to His Rohanis, the Prime Minister, for his continuous support for charity work in the kingdom. His Rohan is the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, delivered a keynote speech marking the International Day of Peace to be celebrated on September the 21st under the theme, The Sustainable Development Goals Building Blocks for Peace. His Rohan has affirmed that Bahrain stands in supporting international efforts to improve the humanitarian situation and achieve security and stability stems from the firm belief and collective responsibility to protect the world from chaos and destruction. He warned against the pitfalls of conflict ranging in parts of the world on the present and future of humanity, which stands at a dangerous turning point. 
The Prime Minister urged collective action to maintain peace and provide the basic needs for all people in the world to live in security and stability, calling upon the international community to focus on sustainable development, the cornerstone of lasting peace. He described development and peace as inseparable, warning that current wars, conflicts and terrorism would destroy the resources of nations and people and compromise the future of coming generations. His Rohanis reiterated the determination to meet UN sustainable development objectives, saying that Bahrain, led by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa al-Khalifa, has succeeded in achieving the Millennium Development Goals. The Premier warned against the brewing crises in certain Arab countries endangering the region and the whole world, which is characterized by entangled and intertwined interests and relations. He urged a unified vision and collective efforts to enable the region to emerge from the current crises ravaging some countries, underlining the political and economic losses due to the absence of peace. He also called for effective measures to confront security, political and economic challenges which are plaguing the Middle East and achieve peace in this highly volatile and untenable region of the world. His Rohan has stressed the importance of steering the world away from any ethnic, racial or religious tainted divisions and called upon the world to join hands to combat the multifaceted terrorism which is spreading its tentacles and taking a heavy toll in human lives and properties. He underscored the importance of elaborated, a future-oriented perspective to anticipate conflicts and put in place alternatives to deal with challenges timely. He also highlighted Bahrain's development march, which focuses on the economic, social, educational, housing and health facets. His Rohan has commended the UN-led efforts to bolster international cooperation and promote global peace for all people to develop and prosper. The Deputy Prime Minister, His Highness Sheikh Ali bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, attended a ceremony for the Isa bin Ali Award for Voluntary Work, which was held under the patronage of Sheikh Isa bin Ali bin Khalifa Al Khalifa. It was organized by the Good Word Society in collaboration with the Arab Union for Volunteers. Present were a number of senior officials and guests. In a statement on the occasion, the Deputy Prime Minister stressed the importance of activities and events designed to stimulate giving in Arab societies to serve humanity. He underlined the initiatives adopted by Sheikh Isa bin Ali bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, the honorary president of the Good Word Society to highlight areas of voluntary work in Arab societies. Speaking at the ceremony, His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Ali Al Khalifa expressed gratitude to the directives of the leadership for its prominent role in sustainable development, adding that the patronage of His Royal Highness to the award comes as a translation of the thought and directives of the Prime Minister, His Royal Highness Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, who encouraged the award. For his part, President of the Arab Union for Volunteers, Hassan Bouhazza, said that this prestigious Arab award is based on two main principles, namely appreciation and stimulation, in order to structure volunteer infrastructure in the Arab world. Vice President of the Arab Union for Volunteers, Mohammed Al-Asfur, also spoke about achievements of the union. His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Ali Al-Khalifa honored the winners during the ceremony. A documentary about the Isa bin Ali Al-Khalifa Prize during the past six years was also viewed during the ceremony. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, took part along with world leaders and heads of delegations in the opening of the UN General Assembly to discuss a number of key issues affecting the present and the future of the international community, including the situation in Syria, Yemen, and Libya, as well as the Palestinian and the refugee issue. In his speech, the UN Secretary General, Ban Ki moon, affirmed the importance of the Paris Agreement to achieve sustainable development and improve the future, praising the progress made in regards to climate change and expressing his hope for the implementation of the agreement. He highlighted the security threats facing countries across the world and armed conflict that resulted from extremism and violence, pointing out that the Syrian crisis has claimed the largest number of lives, stressing the importance of a political solution to this crisis, calling on all stakeholders to work to achieve that goal. President of the UN 71st session of the General Assembly, Peter Thompson, addressed the UN Sustainable Development Plan 2030, which aims to provide a better living to all societies in the coming period. Key speakers of the first day of the session include the President of the Republic of Brazil, Michel Temer, U.S. President Barack Obama, the Emir of Qatar, Sheikh Tamim bin Hamad Al Thani, the Egyptian President Abdel Fattah al Sisi, King Abdullah II of Jordan, in addition to Morocco, France, the United Kingdom, and Turkey, and a number of heads of delegations taking part in the session. The meetings of the UN General Assembly are considered to be an opportunity to exchange views on key problems and challenges facing the international community to reach an international response to resolve these problems and overcome the challenges.
The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, took part in a working luncheon that was held by British Foreign Secretary Mr. Boris Johnson for the GCC Foreign Ministers on the sidelines of the 71st session of the UN General Assembly in New York City. The meeting reviewed joint relations between the two sides and means of enhancing and developing them. The two sides also exchanged views on boosting security and stability in the region, in addition to coordination regarding regional and international issues of mutual concern. The Foreign Minister asserted that the constant joint meetings between the GCC countries and the United Kingdom will enhance the interests of the two sides as they will contribute in finding permanent solutions to the region's conflicts for the security and prosperity of its people. On the sidelines of the 71st session of the UN General Assembly, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, met today with his Surinamese counterpart, Nirmala Badr Singh, in New York. Sheikh Khalid affirmed Bahrain's keenness to bolster cooperation and strengthen ties with the Republic of Suriname in various fields, particularly in the economic field, in view of the cooperation opportunities available in the banking sector. He noted the importance of the exchange of visits by officials from the two countries for new opportunities related to joint ties as well as to bolster coordination at international gatherings towards various issues. For her part, the foreign minister of Suriname expressed her country's appreciation of friendship with Bahrain, affirming her keenness to bolster joint ties for the benefit of the two countries. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, conveyed the greetings of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, His Royal Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, and His Royal Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, to the Emir of Qatar, Sheikh Tamim bin Hamad Al Thani, and their wishes to him for good health and to Qatar and the Qatari people for their progress and prosperity. This was while the Minister of Foreign Affairs attended a dinner banquet hosted by the Emir of Qatar for the head of Arab delegations, taking part in the meeting of the 71st session of the UN General Assembly in New York. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, took part in the high-level meeting on the political future of Syria organized by the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia in New York City. The meeting affirmed the importance of a ceasefire and an end to hostilities maintaining Syria's unity and stability, in addition to reaching a political solution to safeguard the Syrian people based on the principles of Geneva 2012 and the relevant international resolutions, as well as removing all obstacles facing the delivery of humanitarian aid to civilians and the return of Syrian refugees. And the foreign minister also met with his Ethiopian counterpart, Tedros Adhanom. They discussed the progress of bilateral relations and means of fostering them in various fields. The foreign minister also met with his Portuguese counterpart, Augusto Santos Silva, and expressed Bahrain's keenness to strengthen relations and cooperation. He noted the existing cooperation opportunities and components to boost cooperation in various fields for the benefits of both nations. Mr. Silva affirmed his country's keenness to bolster its relations with the Kingdom of Bahrain, praising the kingdom's progress and wishing Bahrain further prosperity. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa deputized today Sheikh Khalifa bin Rashid Al Khalifa and Sheikh Abdullah bin Rashid Al Khalifa to attend a reception held by the Chinese Ambassador to Bahrain, Mr. Xi Zehong, at the Ritz Carlton Hotel, marking the 67th anniversary of the National Day of China. The reception was attended by a number of officials and diplomatic corps in Bahrain. Sheikh Khalifa bin Rashid Al Khalifa and Sheikh Abdullah bin Rashid Al Khalifa conveyed the greetings of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister to the Chinese leadership and people on this national occasion, wishing the friendly country for the progress and prosperity. They also praised the developing Bahraini-Chinese relations in all different fields and the strong and outstanding bilateral ties that are based on mutual respect and joint keenness on enhancing cooperation for the best interests of both friendly countries and people. For his part, the Chinese ambassador expressed his sincere thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness the Prime Minister for his support to bolster cooperation between the two friendly nations. The Chinese ambassador also asserted his country's keen interest on expanding horizons of cooperation with the Kingdom of Bahrain on all various levels.
An online portal has been launched by the Supreme Judicial Council to provide women with law degrees a space to connect with each other and establish relations. More on this report with Shoga Mohammed. The Supreme Judicial Council launched a new electronic portal today, specifically tailored for women in the legal sector of the Kingdom of Bahrain. The purpose of the EGATE is to provide these women with a place to connect and get in touch with each other and exchange information. We will gather in this uh, legal and electronic uh, page, which will be the gate under the umbrella of the Supreme Judicial Council, uh, to exchange information and to fulfill any uh, loopholes in uh, judiciary, I mean, in uh, legal information. Uh, that will be a great opportunity for all ladies in Bahrain that holding a uh, degree in law bachelor degrees, master's de degrees or PhDs in law, exchange information, put their uh, resumes and uh, log on to exchange the full information and uh, to uh, be together in Bahrain. And inshallah it will help the society and everything will be uh, well. Emel Abul, a judge in the Appeal Civil Grand Courts and member of the Executive Committee stated that the portal was created because the SJC felt it was a necessary tool that would be a great help in regards to communication and relations in the legal sector. The idea was uh, you know, launched and uh, supervised by um, the Judicial Council. Supreme Judicial Council by our chief, uh, Mr. Salem al Kawari, and uh, ourselves actually to uh, find a forum, general forum for the legal ladies, whereas we don't find it here in the society in general. And uh, we would like, uh, as judges, and uh, we would like to meet our uh, colleagues, lawyers, and any other uh, law people who are holding uh, degrees in law to uh, you know maintain the good uh, relationship and and you know exchange information today's event marks the beginning of a new and innovative feature on the supreme judicial council's website and hopefully it will bring together and support the women in the legal sector in the kingdom of bahrain for bahrain news i'm shogh mohammed the MENA Industrial Summit opened its doors today to professionals from the region to discuss the future of the industry in the light of new challenges. More on this report with Sarah Lebrick. The MENA Industrial Summit 2016 has begun its opening session, asking their key speakers on stage the question, can the industrial sector save the region from the resource crisis? The session speakers include the head of the UNIDO, EDB representatives and Saudi sector professionals. 60 to 70 percent of the of the inhabitants of the Gulf region they are between the age of 18 to the age, 15 to the age of 35, which means we have a very young population, and which is very positive vis-a-vis -vis so many other countries. They're worried because their populations are aging. Uh, how can we reflect this in the economic development and diversification and job creation for this uh, uh, generation and the future generation? You know. Uh, we have to start by working on the educational system. We have to change the classical uh, uh, educational system to be more toward creativity and innovation. You know, because this is what will lead for uh, you know job seekers to be well adapted in their jobs, either in the private sector or in the public sector. More and more, we're going to have young generation coming to the to the labor market. So, are they equipped? Is there is a correlation between the, the labor market and the, and the graduates, or those graduates are equipped in the labor market. So if I have the strategy for economic diversification, SMEs development, but who's going to do this? Who? Again, <laughs> we're investing in our human resources, so we have to equip our human resources. And that's always the problem with strategies, you know? Because if the strategy does not depend and does not rely on investing on the, on, the, on the local human resources, you know, it's, it's serving whom? And, and, this is, and this is where we're trying to pinpoint for Bahrain 2030. In terms of the improvement of economic growth with the collaboration of the private sector and the government sector, 
The private sector is very important because they're the drivers of the economy. And when we talk about the private sector, it isn't just the very big companies. The backbone of most economies is the SME sector, the small and medium-sized businesses. And so what we want to do is to improve our dialogue with those industries. And it's not just about reaching out to companies around the world to bring new companies to Bahrain. It's about ensuring that we engage with the existing investors to encourage them to expand and upgrade, but also to listen to their advice about how we can live up to our slogan of business-friendly Bahrain. The MENA Industrial Summit here in Bahrain is talking about the main challenges that are facing the industrial sector in the GCC region, whether it's manpower, the education of manpower, or even security challenges that have deprived it of its growth. This is Sarah Barek for Bahrain 55. A press conference was held this morning at the Bahrain Chamber of Commerce and Industries headquarters, Beta Tijar, to reveal details of the upcoming inaugural Reinvest in Bahrain Forum. Danielle Deporto has more. The first ever Reinvest in Bahrain Forum, to be held next week, is being organized by the Bahrain Asian Traders Committee of the Bahrain Chamber of Commerce and Industry, in coordination with the Bahrain Economic Development Board under the patronage of Minister of Industry, Commerce and Tourism, Zayed Azayani. The aim is to encourage the local business community to reinvest profits into the kingdom, as well as to attract other business leaders and investors from the region and beyond, with particular emphasis on the Asian expatriate community, to learn about and benefit from recent economic deregulation. We are expecting more than four to 500 audience on the day. 100, particular 100 business community is participating from the Pakistan, well-known businessmen, and other 150 people, business communities, who confirm their participation from the GCC countries. Bahrain's strong and competitive economic fundamentals and its attractive business environment will be highlighted by the forum. It is hoped the event will lead to fresh investment and the creation of new jobs. In line with the current national economic strategy, the forum will prioritize the five sectors identified as offering the greatest growth potential. With the EDB coordination, with the EDB, they study four, uh, five sectors in Bahrain on the priority basis. The tourism, the IT sector, the medical sector, the services sector, and as well some development sector. Wherever EDB will be on board on the 26th, uh, they will give presentation on that sector and what is the attraction on those sectors. I believe uh, uh, we will get a good response. The inaugural Reinvest in Bahrain Forum will be held here at Beit al-Tijar next Monday the 26th. Reporting for Bahrain Television, I'm Danielle Deporto.